The nature of Krishna Katha, Hari Katha, is infinite. That of infinite nature. We can touch, can try to touch corner of it. So, I can continue Hari Katha. But I would like to invite queries. Okay. What I spontaneously feel like speaking now is that about our sadha and bhakti. Sadha mayo I know these are basic things, but sometimes we need to do the groundwork. So we need to understand some of the basic realities in our life about how to cultivate life of Krishna consciousness. The faith, the deep, deeply enlightened faith, empowered with our devotion, loving devotion is required to, to relate to Krishna in pure Krishna consciousness. Faith itself has got so much power in it. In the modern days, many people not only believe, they also find some reserves, find some nice reserves, healings through faith. It's called healing through faith. It happens. It's reality. You know, it works on the subtle level. So what to speak more on that when we relate to our life of Krishna consciousness full of faith, deep faith, devotional faith, then that, then at that stage, that, that type of cultivation is no more casual. We often have more casual way of cultivation of spiritual life. But uh, casual way of living a Krishna conscious life or cultivating Krishna conscious life is better than nothing. Something is better than nothing. But that cannot be ideal standard. The ideal standard of cultivation of life of Krishna consciousness is never casual. It's much more than casual. It's, it should be some live reciprocations between the devotees and to whom the Supreme Lord devotees are devoted to. So, there should be some life, reciprocation, relations. Cultivation of Krishna conscious life is cultivation of a beautiful, divine, loving relationship with the divine couple, Radha Krishna Chandra, Radha Madhunga, Radha Govinda Devji, Radha Govindaji, Vishwan Mahaprabhu, Shambhanda Kyanam, Shambhanda Vidhiva Prayojana, we all understand that. Lord Chaitanya, Timan Mahaprabhu lays so much stress and importance on cultivation of our higher Krishna conscious life, devotional life, uh, through Shambhanda Vidhiva Prayojana. Mm. Shambhanda Kyanam, the beginning of Shambhanda Kyanam is very much required. Once it comes in our life, the nature of cultivation, devotional life will no more remain as casual. It will be living. Lord Krishna gave examples, beautiful examples in Bhagavad Gita. Through that verse, very super scientific way, not only scientific way, super scientific way. Because the knowledge, the nature of knowledge of Samadhi Bhagavad Gita is not only science but Prakyana, super science, hmm? full of Prakyana, Jnana, Jnana, Vijnana, Prakyana, hmm? Prakyana, Ilapura. So, because the real science, the super science, includes not only objective 
scientific knowledge, but also subjective. Subjectively scientific knowledge. Our life is the combination of both conceptions, objective as well as subjective, <coughs> mundane as well as spiritual. Okay, so Lord Krishna gave beautiful examples to this to that verse. Indriyani paranya, indriya paranya mana, manashastu para buddhi, buddhi riyah paradishtu sa, buddhi rapma maha para nupanisha. Address, addressing Arjuna, Krishna, Lord Krishna was explaining, Arjuna, please understand. Suppose, understand, if someone, someone doesn't have pure sabdha, pure bhakti for me, I am absent for him. How? I give you an example. Like, see, Indriyani Paranya Indriyani Paranya. Suppose, because you have eyes, ear, nose, tongue, touch, touch faculty, that's why the whole world is existent to you. If you don't have eyes, you have no world. The world of uh, world of sight, world of seeing is absent to you. Similarly, if you don't have ear, the world of sound is absent to you. If you don't have nose, the world of smelling absent to you, or of smelling fragrance is no more there. You don't have touching ability, the world of touch is not there. Understand. And if you don't have, ultimately under, you don't have the soul, in spite of having all these senses, nothing will be working. Nothing is there to you. So, back to the point. So if you don't have your senses, the world of your perception, the, world, the whole universe, the world of perception, is absent to you. Although it is a reality, but still it's not there. So, your senses are greater than this world of the experience in the Anparana. So, your senses are greater than this phenomenal world, mundane world, world which you can perceive object, objects of perception. Then, in the Upaparamana, now mind. Your mind is greater than the, than your senses. How? Suppose, you have all your senses active, and see, you can see, hear, smell, touch, everything. But if you are absent-minded, although your eyes are open, you don't see anything. Don't catch. Although you are hearing something, you say, oh, I did not hear. Did you say that? Although you touch something, you don't remember, you touch. You are absent-minded. So mind, mind is not wakeful, conscious. Okay. So if mind is not working, even though all your senses are wakeful, they don't perceive really perceive anything. Because mind is the media of feelings and experience. So the quality, the quality of the mind, mental faculty, is greater than the usefulness of mental state is greater than the senses. Krishna is going upward, step by step, going higher, step by step. Manashastu Parabhuti, now mind, pay attention, that the faculty of your intelligence is greater than the function of your mind. Because if you don't have proper intelligence, light of intelligence or knowledge or wisdom, buddhi means knowledge or wisdom. So if you do not have the true intelligence and knowledge of wisdom, higher knowledge of wisdom, then you have your senses, your mind, but you, you don't know what would be good for you and bad for you. You don't have the faculty of judgment for your functioning of considerations. 
what is good, what is bad for you, are not there because you are without intelligence, knowledge, light of wisdom. So, although you have your senses, you have this mundane world, earth, senses, your mind, but you, if you are without, if you, if you are without a divider, light of intelligence or not, wisdom, then they are not really useful. All these are not really useful to you because you don't even know what is good and bad for you. You don't even know what kind of activity you engage to produce good result, bring beneficial result in your life, and what type of activity will bring bad results. So, buddhi, the function of higher intelligence, knowledge, and wisdom is higher than the position of mind. Manasasthi para buddhi, buddhi ya paratastasha. Now, you will go about the level of your intelligence or wisdom. There you find your real self. So your real divine self, which is called Jivo Soul, Spirit Soul, none other than <coughs> infinite infinitesimal part of mind. Upanishad speaks the same reality, speaks about the same reality in different other way. The Lord Krishna here, Krishna clearly described After buddhi, after your buddhi means faculty of intelligence or state of intelligence or knowledge, wisdom, what entity you have got, it is you. The greater, the greater level of your existence, that is you. As your real self. And beyond that, super soul, Paramatma. Upadastha, Mantra, Chahatta, Bhukta, Mahisharam, Paramatma, Iti, Chaputta, Nishara. So back to the point. See how Lord Krishna explained it step by step in this way. And reaching the highest level of, mm, higher level of spirituality, higher than that level of Krishna consciousness, world of Krishna consciousness. From the objective plane of experience, he started from the earthly level of existence. Then Krishna is reaching, slowly taking us on the highest level of subjective experience, subjective truths. Mm -hmm. The highest manifestation of our most beautiful, blissful subjective truth is none other than truth of Krishna consciousness. Mm -hmm. Because the Lord Krishna means the supreme personification embodiment of all power, beauty and bliss. We all know about it. Although we know about it, it feels so good, so blissful to mm, speak again and again, to glorify again and again. Such is the nature, material nature of mm, attraction in Krishna. Mm. Why? In which connection I explain this? That to the point, bhakti, sattva, bhakti. So, if we have the world, just as if we don't have, if we, if we don't have the eyes, ear, nose, okay, touching, function, we don't have, simply we don't have the existence of this world before us don't have any experience. So if you don't, in other words, if you don't have the senses, whole world, in spite of being a reality, is all absent, nothing. Similarly, Lord Krishna says, Sadhagra Jammati Indriyam. If you don't have faith in me, if you don't have bhakti for me, even though I have supreme reality, but still I am absent to you. Just as if you don't have eyes, even though the world of seeing and sight it's a, it's a great reality, but still it's absent to you because you are blind. You can't hear anything because you are deaf. 
Similarly, if you don't have bhakti, I am not there. Although I am supreme reality, okay, concrete reality, concrete divine reality, but still you cannot see me, feel me, touch me, cannot relate with me, because you don't have bhakti. Hmm. This way, inner, inner spiritual cultivation, inner heart's cultivation, and loving relation with the Supreme Lord is required. More than casual ways, then it works wonderfully. Word of Shambhanda Jnana, you need to be enlightened hmm, with the knowledge your knowledge of Shambhala can. Is there any query on any devotee? And I'd like to address the query on the other speaker. Yes, please. Yes. 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 When we talk about faith, how do we know we have the right faith? How do we set our faith correct or wrong? Sometimes we have faith in doing certain things and we believe that it is our faith. But that faith might be wrong also, right? Because somebody needs to check whether that faith is correct or not. How do we know that? Sure. That's why we talk about enlightened faith, not a blind belief system. Because being devotees of being the devotees of the Supreme Personality of Universal Divine Truth who is called as Krishna by right? one of the most beloved names, endeared names. Means being the follower of truth, enlightened truth. It's never following a belief system, blind belief system. That's why, yes, that's why the nature of the devotee's faith, devotional faith, is, must be enlightened. Illuminated. So it is understood through realization. Okay, addressing <coughs> relating to your query. We can know, understand whether our faith is just a belief system, blind or enlightened, proper or just based on something false. Through realization. Because realization means realization. So, just uh, through your objective or subjective realization, you can just understand whether you are wrong or right. That has to be developed hmm? from the plane of, from the depth of your heart, from the plane of soul. Hmm. So, realization is something you just experience directly and realize what it is. Okay? If anything wrong, if your faith is misdirected in any way, also realize it's wrong. Then you also find out which is the right way in comparative study and the contrast. Okay. Mm. Uh, on the realization part, so I have heard in certain scriptures that when God starts or when Krishna starts testing you, he, he, or when he starts loving you, then he sends all sorts of uh, problems to you. Sometimes you become poor, sometimes you become unhealthy. Like Kunti Mata asked for... <coughs> sometimes. sometimes. So, in this case, in this case, hmm. the realization by like my understanding of realization for the person who is following the path of bhakti might get realization that it is not the right way or how, or how do we know that our realization is correct or not because it might end up that if problems start coming at that time your faith is tested and how do I ensure that I don't get bewildered by this testing of faith 
good question. I tell you, I tell you frankly in the beginning, it's not always the case. Krishna always sends the problems in the life of the devotees just to test his or her faith. Sometimes it happens. Well, sometimes problems are sent to make a devotee like elite commando. You know, in the army, if somebody has to be trained up like an elite commando, the training of an ordinary soldier is not sufficient to become an elite commando. Like a very special austere training they have to go fast to, to have that power and ability. So it's more exceptional type, more special type. But sometimes Lord Krishna sends some test. Uh, in the lives of his devotee to see whether he can become an elite commando okay, against uh, the war of Muhammad or not. Yes, well, but no, it's not for all the devotees all the time he's sending the problems. You know, problems basically come in our life following the law of karma caused by the past you know, karma and our own doings in this present life. Some are influenced, some of the results and fruits we receive on, in this uh, lifetime, influenced or caused by past karma and some, or some are by current activities. Okay. So we should not necessarily relate to all the pro problems coming in our life directly to the cultivation of Krishna consciousness because I became Krishna devotee. Because we have to understand in the first place have I really become Krishna devotee? Just ask ourselves. Am I really, have I really become a true Krishna devotee? So that Krishna is really testing me in that relation my devotion to me? Have I become that in the first place? Okay. If not, then it should not be connected that why he should bother to send me send all these problems to my life. It's just caused by my own time, place, situation, environment and knowledge. Uh, what in environmental influence, I won't call them. Because most of the times we find Tomar Pujar Chale Tomar Pujar. There is a saying by the poet Rabindranath Tagore, he explained that, oh, oh Lord, oh my dear Lord, many a time in my life I just engage in so much ritualistic worshipping of you just to forget you. I become so forgetful of you while I engage in formal worshipping of you. Why is that in my life? I make a big soul that I am engaging in your worships. But as soon as I, I, I sit down, I engage in your worship, except for worshipping you, I worship all other things in my life. <laughs> That's what I practically do, realistically do. I want this, that, this, that, everything from you except wanting you. All comes in my mind, oh Lord, please fulfill, please fulfill this desire of mine, that desire of mine, this desire of mine, all this. I don't want you. What is this? What kind of worshiper I am? So we have to ask ourselves. In the first place, have we become real worshipper, real devotee of Lord Krishna that he will even bother to send me problems in my life? So, <coughs> Lord Krishna is not directly involved. He is a very beautiful, benevolent, <laughs> and playful Lord. Okay. He's the Lord of the universe. He doesn't have so much time and energy. He doesn't have his soul. He's the busiest person. Okay? So he, he doesn't just bother with me to cause problems, same problem, test. Yes. But he may try to pay attention to a person if he or she is a devotee. Okay? Now, back to the relating to your point from other aspect, from other angle, angle of view. <coughs> there are so many examples, so many instances, examples that Lord Krishna also sends prosperity, and so much prosperity and success, 
through beautiful experiences in the lives of the Buddhas. Okay, so our knowledge, our concept about Krishna consciousness, cultivation of Krishna consciousness has to be balanced, not only problematic, <laughs> but also positive way. So there's so much positive gain also. Okay. So back to the point. Lord Krishna is not directly involved, even he's not indirectly involved. But in that one can see because nothing can happen in this world without being sanctioned directly or indirectly. Therefore, sometimes we have to say it's indirectly involved. But indirect involvement means we cannot directly question Krishna or accuse Krishna. Like for like example of money. Money is made for utility. If somebody takes the money and this uses that. It's not the fault of government, not the fault of the governor who is making signature on the money by whose signature money getting validated. So if some criminals uses the money some, for some criminal activity, we cannot directly hold him responsible because you signed over the money, so money got validated by the so you are responsible for this criminal activity. So give me an example. Similarly, everything Lord Krishna gave us eyes, hands, ears, all for utility, highest utility, not for misuse. If anybody misuses and gets the bad result, Lord Krishna is not responsible for that. We are responsible. These days we find human beings are engaged in doing so many bad activities, They're exploiting mother nature, polluting the natural, you know, the, the natural healthy environment, all along in the name of some artificial scientific civilizations, you know, creating imbalance, destroying the natural eco balance, balance of the natural eco balance ecosystem, many ways. So then, when some reaction comes, if somebody says, Oh God, why are you sending this? Why are you causing, why are you, uh, why are you bringing so much problems in our life? That's wrong. God is not doing it. We are doing it. We are directly responsible. God never says, Krishna never said, Oh, you misuse all this because I gave you intelligence. I gave you some knowledge and intelligence and your hands, so you will misuse it. I never said that. I, rather, every time, all the time, I told you, I directed to, instructed to you to utilize, to do good things. Utilize everything in a positive way, never a negative way. But if you don't listen to me, you are violating my instructions. And then you are doing bad things. And then when bad results come in, when reaction, bad reactions come in, results come in, then you are trying to accuse me, putting blame on me. I gave you these both hands to save life, to do good things, not to kill anyone. These hands, the highest utility of these hands, okay, to do many good things, hugging, doing many things, writing, great literatures, saving patients' life. Same hands are saving patients' life in the operation theater. Okay, and same hands are killing the person, is it? Killing the life. Not the, not the fault of hands. Not the fault why the Lord gave us hands. Fault lies with us. Okay, because we are misusing. We are misusing, they are due to misuse. Similarly, most of the problems in our life come due to the misuse, due to the lack of knowledge, due to the lack, absence of the light of knowledge, light of, absence of light of consideration, proper considerations about what is what. How to make best use of something in the best interest of our life, Krishna con God consciousness. Okay. That's why all these lackings and shortcomings, problems come. But when things are done, proper understanding, a properly understood way, okay, enlightened with divine consciousness, then opposite results come. Results come which are opposite to problems positive results start coming in our life. Okay. 
solutions will start coming in our life. Greater harmony. We discover our life and meet the greater harmony with everything. So, back to the point. <coughs> Rather, the real, real results, real fruits we receive from the cultivation of, from the genuine cultivation of Krishna consciousness, genuine cultivation of Krishna conscious life is, is bound to be good, bound to be positive, okay, not negative. Sometimes, it's very playful, Lord, playful, sweet Lord, Lord of sweet play, so he gets into play with his devotee and plays in different ways, okay, negative, positive, okay, so that's a different thing. When Lord Krishna actually engages in playing with his devotees and sends some problems in the mood of playing, okay, like like winning gold medal, winning gold medal in the or uh, what silver medal in Olympic games, was a bit problematic. Not always was smooth, so austere. Once, but other than that austerity, there will be no meanings of the sports, games, and cigarette. Everything is achieved in a very just smooth way, happy, smooth, comfortable way. Why is the power? What is the play of power and ability? In Olympic games would have no meaning. Understand? So similarly, Krishna also wants to see some greater ability and power, spiritual power, devotional power in the life of his devotees. So that's why he sometimes, in order to taste that quality of devotion and power, he sends some apparent problem, apparent resistance to see how his devotee reacts and listen to him. What quality of faith and devotion he or she has got. Immediately gone, all faith, devotion immediately gone as soon as experience faced with some difficulty or still he or she is continuing with faith in him, devotion in him. If he still, if he or she still can continue with the faith and devotion, then Krishna recognizes that. Krishna actually recognizes, considers that to be real, real devotion. And he is so much pleased. Then he becomes so much pleased with that quality of faith and devotion. In the next moment, what he sends, the experience he sends to his same devotee, how beautiful and blissful from the beginning to the end. Playful also, we cannot forget the one of the original characters, characteristics of Lord Krishna, that he is very playful Lord also. Mm -hmm. So, we should never lose hope that way. So back to the point, most of the problems in our life connected to our law of karma and our own right and wrong actions. Krishna is not directly involved with that. When he is directly involved, even if some problems appear, just temporary. It's like act, like problems in a dramatic acting. When you watch a movie or drama, there also you experience so much problems, well and always, pleasure and pain, so, or drama. So, some problems, sometimes some problems seen in the life of actual Krishna devotee, real Krishna devotee, is like, it's like dramatized. Temporary. Okay, it's not really, it's not supposed to stay longer, last longer, to go off by the interference, by the gracious interference of Lord Krishna, to go any very soon. It has to be understood that way. And that this is the reality what I'm speaking about. This is the reality. Okay. And also in other way, the point I touched in the beginning, if Krishna wants to make someone like elite commando okay, in his army, transcendental army, to fight against the evil force, okay, then also, then of course he sends, playfully sends many tests, negative tests, 
to let the devotee go through the training, austere training, and overcome, win over, and be ultimately victorious. Okay, overcome and win the victory of all those battles, of the life battle. Okay. So, ultimate result is victory. So, ultimately no problem. After going through austere training period of the life, I can accomplish the training. Devotees of Krishna have to accomplish the training. I mean, certain group of the devotees, not applied to one and all. So, with the accomplishment of the training, it's all, all the experience of pride and joy, like in the field of Olympic Games. No, no. And those Olympians, they trained up by their coaches. Sometimes they hate their coaches. You know why? Because coaches make them work so heavy. All those Olympian, Olympic coaches make their students, they train up their students so, sometimes so ruthlessly, cruelly, to become kind, ultimately to become kind. So cruelly. So sometimes they don't like to go through that training period so austere. But when the same candidate wins medal in the Olympic game, wins gold, gold medals, silver medal in the Olympic games, what is his feeling? How is their feeling? All the experience of, the past experience of austerity and pains he had to undergo through, through the, his training period, all is now converted into experience of joy, joy of success. All converted into experience of happiness. During training period, sometimes, training period, sometimes he cries in pain. He cries in pain now, after winning the medal, he cries in joy, crying in happiness. So that's also, that's also happens in the life of the Krishna devotee. Similarly, that also happens in the life of Krishna, Krishna devotee. Ultimate experience is that of full of joy, crying of crying in joy. Okay. Therefore, <coughs> described in the Holy Scriptures. The highest level of loving devotion of Holy Krishna, Ashtasati, the eight kinds of you know, symptoms of prema, ecstatic love of Krishna manifest. What Lord Chaitanya exhibited uh, in his pastimes through, all the, through his divine life. There are eight kinds of uh, divine ecstatic symptoms, ecstatic love symptoms. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but that's the highest level. Below that level, okay, you know the, the symptoms, signs like Shantira, Bhattu, Kaulatam, Viraktir, Manushunnata, Asha, Vanda, Samutkanta, Namo, Gani, Sadaruchi. Ashutista, Gunab Khani, Pritista, Ashutista, and this way. I am not going into the details, the explanations, the verse to take so much time. Like, <coughs> the, like the science, like the 
natural symptoms of science you will experience when you make advancement. Okay, you start actually relating to the world of Krishna, Krishna consciousness. Like, <coughs> you feel so good about it. You feel so much sadha, so much respect. And every time, every moment, you feel so happy about that, to live in that world of your experience, that experience, your natural respect, and feelings of care develop more than before. And you become steady in your life with, with the growth of your natural attachment okay, towards the beautiful Lord Krishna, divine couple, Lord Mahaprabhu, all his family, you find, him, you find yourself that your attachment is growing more and more, loving it. And ultimately, you will find you find some joy, natural joy, Krishna consciousness. Okay? And that joy getting intensified, the ultimate state becomes Krishna Prema. The Krishna Prema is the ultimate stage of blissful love of Krishna. When you will feel all this Ashtashakti Vikaras, eight kinds of transcendental <coughs> symptoms of Krishna Prema exhibited by Lord Chaitanya. Okay. So all will be experienced. Basically, Krishna consciousness is an experience-based spirituality rather than just following a blind belief system. It's never, a, it's never just a belief, one of the belief systems, but it's more experience-based. Question will arise, why, do we, why don't you experience directly? Because the answer to that is that we often become casual. Okay, we just try to cultivate our life more casual way. We don't really enter that world. That's why we are lacking in experience. Okay. It's called devotional work. It means you have to devote. World of devotion means you have to devote. First you devote, then you get. Payment is not made without devotion, without you give. Tattva laurla mati matra bulla me kalam. Laurla is required. Laurla means greed, transcendental greed, hankering. Mm -hmm. In the language of Sila, Mati Raksha Sila Dirko Shaymar, inner hankering. Yes, definitely. So expressive, appropriate. Innermost hankering in love of Krishna. In our most hankering for Krishna, an intense love called Prema. Hmm. So when, when we offer that prize to Krishna, what is that prize? Our inner hankering. Krishna also gives us Prema. Krishna, any other question? Query? Nine o'clock. So we stop here or we can go on, continue. Hmm. Depending upon the mood, spontaneous moods of the devotees as in Bushi. I am quite fine, I'd like to go on for hours. Hmm. Relations with Krishna. Krishna represents whole infinite 
world of listening to Sri Krishna in so many colors, colorful ways to have relationship with Krishna. Rainbow, more than rainbow. In sky, there in sky you see rainbow. Beautiful. Looks so beautiful. So many colors. So the nature of our divine relationship with Krishna can be that of rainbow nature. So colorful. So composed of so many sweet love melodies, love colors, love feelings, love aspects. Mm. Oh, I'm enjoying it. I'm thinking how to briefly explain. Siman Mahalar Chaitan, Siman Mahaprabhu, so beautifully explained Samandha Vidya Prayajana in Sirupa Shiksha and also Sanatana Shiksha. Mm. So first, actually you know, Samandha Vidya, these three aspects of a Krishna consciousness, Samandha Vidya Prayajana, all are so interrelated. One cannot be fully conceived, one cannot be fully understood without the connection of the other. They are all complementary to each other, greatly complement each other. Mm. So in a word, in that cell, again, we all know Samandha means relationship, Jnanam means knowledge. Knowledge of, knowledge about that divine relationship with Krishna. And to have that Samandha Jnanam means cultivation. Cultivation of the knowledge, experience of Krishna consciousness. Hmm. The Samandha starts can start in various ways. The ways such as nine names, nine devotional ways, following the nine devotional ways, nine names. Savanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padra, Shivanam, Achanam, Vandanam, Dasham, Shokham, Atman, Vedanam, Vidhikamushar, Pita, Vishnu, Bhaktischan, Navadakshana. Vidhikamushar, Pita, Vishnu, Bhaktischan, Navadakshana. There are basic nine ways. Savanam, Savanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padu, Shivanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dasham, Shokham, Atma, Nivedanam, these are the nine days. Iti Pungshar Pita, Iti Pungshar Pita, Vishnu, Bhaktis, Chen, Navalakshana. The nine kinds of devotion manifested in this nine, through these nine limbs, or nine ways we can call it. Side by side, same Samandakan can be developed, cultivated through the ways as prescribed, recommended by Sri Bhagavad and Yupadesh <coughs> through also acceptance of the favorables and rejection of the unfavorables. Okay. Describe that beautifully. <coughs> those verses, with those verses, such as what? Vacho Vigam, Manasakrodha Vigam, Jiva Vigam, Madalam Pasto Vigam, Etan Vigam, Yo Vishaheta Dhiva, Sharvama Pimam, Prithivin Shashishya, Natta Haru Priyashascha, Prajalpo Niyama, Prajan Shambhascha Lulancha, Shaibir Bhakti Vinashati. These are all Pratipu to be rejected. Then, in a positive way, then he's giving us the ways to be accepted, everywhere, such as Utsaha, Nishchaya, Dharja, Taktat, Karma, Pravakshana, Shangotaya, Satu, Vritti, Shaivir, Bhakti, Vashittati, Dadati, Pratikrihinati, Vujya, Makhyati, Pritchati, Bhante, Bhajayati, Chayva, Shaivita, Pratilakshana, Shaivita, Pratilakshana. These are all excellent ways to cultivate Shamanda Gyanam, the essence of Krishna. Anukulasa Shankalpa, Prati Kulla Vivarjanam, Rakshi Shati Vishashu Gautri Tivaranam Tatha, Atmanik Sheva Kalpani, Sharvidha Sharanagati. Sharvidha Sharanagati. 
So if I have to explain all these verses, it will take longer time. I can continue each and every verses. I'm just giving you some. Uh, I'm just giving you some glimpses and brief ideas about the ways of how to cultivate relationship with Krishna. These are the ways prescribed, okay, offered before us by our Guru Bhargava. Exalted lives, exalted devotees. Mm. Also many other also, relating to your question, these are also symptoms, you know, as described Mahapur, as Mahapur described in Sikh Shastakam. Dayanam galada sudhāraya, badanam gadabada ruddhāya, dhira pulakoye vichitam gopu kada tabu nāma grahane bhavishyati. O Lord, O beloved Lord, when the day will come in my life, when the, when the day will arrive, time will arrive in my life, when my eyes, eyes will be filled with the flows of love tears for you. In other words, when my eyes will be setting insects, will be setting tears of love for you, crying in love for you. Nayanam galada sudhāraya, badanam gadagada ruddhāya, my, my voice will get choked. You know that, it's a famous part of Shikshash. My voice will get choked up. Pulakai vishtam bhupu, hairs will stand around. I will be receiving divine thrill of ecstasy. When that moment, most beautiful, blissful, most fortunate moment will appear in my life, I will be receiving experience of divine thrill, thrill of joy, ecstatic love of you. When that, when that beautiful, blissful day moments arrive in my life, when in taking as I will be taking your holy name, not just simply chanting, taking, tasting your holy name, all this blissful experience will appear in my life. My eyes will be setting, will be crying in love, joy, love for you. My eyes will get choked in love of you. I will be receiving thrilling experience in love of you. Knowing, actually I feel in love with you, O oh Lord. Now I have actually, I am in intense, I feel, I feel in intense love in you, with you. Therefore I am having all these divine symptoms. So, our ultimate, all our ultimate programs to cultivate Sambandha Gyan with Krishna is, is, to, is to sincerely try, is to, is to try our best to fall in love with God, with Krishna, beloved Lord, love of all God, sorry, sorry, the <coughs> The Lord of all blissful love, beauty. Lord Krishna means the Lord of all divine love and bliss and beauty. So, just making our best endeavor. Even that our best willpower will also help us so much. Our willingness has got some power in it, inshallah. So, we have to try our best to be in love with Krishna, fall in love with Krishna. One day, that trying, repeated efforts will be converted into success, will be converted into real cultivation. 
Samanda with Krishna. A part of our sadhana means to make a sincere effort, to make sincere efforts and try to the best of our ability. And that sincere endeavor will be converted into a success one day. It's called sadhana. None of us can say, oh, we cannot try. We can say, we cannot, uh, we, can, we can say, I'm not successful. How can I achieve? Hmm. How can I truly achieve? Oh, I have not achieved anything. We can say that. Okay, I'm so unable, I'm so unqualified to achieve. We can say that. But we can never say, we cannot even try, give a try. Every one of us can try. That ability is always given in all of us. And give him a sincere try in this shadhana, a part, valuable part of shadhana. Try in Krishna consciousness with all hopes and optimisms. Okay. Absolutely, there is no place of any pessimism. There is absolutely no place, space of pessimism in Krishna consciousness. Because by nature it's full of optimism. Mm. Mm. When you receive Sambandha with Krishna, a love relationship with Krishna, Sambandha is a love relationship, then all those symptoms become Shambhu of Pattaka Alattam, Viraktir Mahana Shunnata, Asharanda Samutkanta, Navagari Sadaruchi, Asatista Gula Khyari, Vidhista Vasatistari. This way. You won't like to spend any moment in your life without Krishna. Just as when somebody, even some mundane examples are given by the exalted personalities just to make us understand in a realistic, concrete way. Even on this mundane play, when the boys and girls, okay, men and women, fall in love with each other, intense love in each other. Then they understand what it is, how beautiful, blissful experience is that. Every moment he or she lives in that experience. When falling in pure love, they experience, that's how they describe, that's how the lovers describe, they actually live in that beautiful experience of loving each other, all the time remembering of each other, whatever they are doing, they are mind and heart already there, so attached to each other, whatever they are doing, they are always absorbed in the thoughts of each other, doing for each other, okay, and just it feels so good for them to think of each other, doing things for each other, even if it happens, even if it, it can happen on this mundane plane of relationship, love relationship, then what to speak more of Krishna conscious love relationship? Awakenment, awakenment in our life, mm. okay, in divine love relationship with Krishna, such a beautiful, blissful, inexplicably beautiful experience is that. Mm. In that stage, a devotee, in that stage, a devotee, a lover of Krishna, mm. devoted lover of Krishna, <coughs> takes experiences so so much an intensely powerful attraction and joy and bliss in love with Krishna so that so much so cannot live his life, cannot live his or her life without Krishna. This is called this is called the real stage, real state of Shambhanda can with Krishna. Waking up finding your own self, discovering, experiencing your own self in love, in divine love with the Supreme Beloved, Krishna. Go Well, that's relatively spoken. 
first deserve their desire. But from the absolute stand, it's not a stand, it's a lingual limitation, we have to say we must stand or stage. Lingual limitation. <coughs> but hmm, from the again, from the absolute plane. Both are complementary. The more one desires, the more one deserves. The more one deserves, the more one desires. Unless you have some instinctive desire in your heart, you cannot deserve it. Unless we have some kind of deserving quality inherent in us on the level of soul and super soul, we won't have even desire. We cannot, we cannot have desire, so our shadhana the life of Shadhana, Krishna consciousness in existence, interrelated, we closely interrelated, both functions, aspects closely interrelated. To desire, to deserve and desire, sorry, to desire and deserve, also to deserve and desire more and more. Okay. In general, so it is stated, it's a general statement, stated more in general, okay, first, de uh, what first deserve and then desire, must be qualified, must be qualified, have the qualifications to achieve, attain that highest wealth of Krishna consciousness. Okay, and then have a desire for that. But unless you have some instinctive, spontaneous desire for Krishna, you can't also deserve. <laughs> that qualification also comes through desire, load them, anchor it. Okay, so they are interdependent. Each promotes the other. The more, the more one deserves, the more one desires. The more one desires, the more one deserves. That's how it works. In the world of Krishna Prema, Krishna Consciousness. And I repeat, the more you deserve, the more you desire, the more you desire, the more you deserve. Krishna he unending, both going parallel way, unending. So function of Chaitya Guru is there, cannot omit. Yes. functions in the life of Krishna consciousness, spiritual cultivation. Definitely there are functions, three aspects of guidance we will see. Chaitya Guru, Diksha Guru, Shiksha Guru. So we often skip on it, the function of our Chaitya Guru. Krishna present within us in the form of a heart, natural heart's inspiration in the form of spontaneous horse experience, it's called Chaitya Guru. Mm. All three manifestations of Guru, Guru Tattva, which are equal. They are all equal, not that, or this one is lower, that one is higher. By Tattva, because they are coming from the same Guru Tattva, Khanda Guru Tattva, because they are all not other than the manifestations of the same Guru Tattva, different functions, aspects. That's why they are considered equally important. But the experience received from Chaitya Guru means a devoted heart, okay? not, not a deluded, okay? no, liberated, liberated soul, liberated heart. That's how it has to be understood. So, no cloudy more light, but without clouds. Sometimes we see, look at the sky. More light is covered by the clouds. Clouds are considered compared like illusions. But when the sky is cloudless, when you look at the moon without clouds, then we can enjoy it. I can relate to more light and enjoy its beauty. Similarly, now Chaitya Guru asked, when we can where we can actually relate to the bona fide inspiration 
the level of our heart, Chaitya Guru, when there is no curves of leaves, then we can relate and we can receive it. So that also has to be understood. Because there are functions of mind and heart. They differ from each other. Often, we may often be misguided by some whimsical, temporary feelings, good or bad feelings of our mind. I like Chaitya Guru's feelings more. The criteria, the nature of the feelings or experience or guidance we receive from the level of Chaitya Guru, core of our heart, is that of much higher type or divine, more divine, or divine nature. And it is not like temporary fleeting desires or whims of mind. It is more, con more constant, deep, and coming back to your life repeatedly and fills your existence with some positive, immortal hope and joy and satisfaction. Then you know it's not just some kind of fleeting mental wings. It's much more than that because it's much deeper higher, okay, more steady, and more positive, okay, more, more divine, a more divine experience. So it's understood self-evidently, understood in a self-evident way. And the Chaiti Guru structure is that inside that? Yes, in the depth, yeah, depth that part. Yeah, inside, yeah. Whether, in, whether in or out, in, in your existence, yeah, yeah existence, your, comes to you. in the core of your heart, the depth of your life existence, yes. internal is deep, internal spiritual realization coming from the core of heart, heart's level, from the level of soul. Okay? Their heart and jivo soul becomes non-different with each other. Mm. But different from one. Right, soul and they are also the souls also receive inspiration of super soul. Actually, in the highest explanation, in the highest considerations, the Chaitya Guru level is that of super soul, where your heart gets completely united with the feelings of the soul, Paramatma, super soul. Soul means our heart, Jivatma. We cannot really separate our, our basic heart's feeling, true heart's feeling and our soul. They are so closely interrelated, interconnected. So, when you say our in-depth Realize of our heart means it's a, it's realizing coming from our soul, level of spirit soul. And then that when the soul also starts receiving inspiration from super soul, then it actually becomes inspiration from Chaitya Guru. In combination of the super in combination with the inspiration we receive from super soul and soul, heart all together. Can I say that it is it's going to be a little bit different? Very different. Mind can misguide you, but inspiration from Chaitya Guru level can never misguide you. Very different. Yeah. That's what I just analyzed. Okay. Right then, any more query? Oh. Tell me again what was the basic question? Oh, deserve, first deserve, then desire. Sorry. Yeah, that statement is very general, common. Like Adho Sadha. Similar way, I can just say Adho Sadha Tata Shadha Sangha Atho Bhajana Pyata Tanathani Vritti Shadha, step by step. Mm. But sometimes, even to start with Sadha, you may need Shadha Sangha first, then Sadha comes. With Sadha first, with the starting of Sadha, then you feel attracted, you become more inquisitive and more, more inquisitive and you start searching for Sadhu Sangha. Okay? Then you will avail Sadhu Sangha. Okay? But also, 
your sattha can more start, can develop more, even can, that can even sprout first in holy association, after taking holy association. Similarly, bhajana kriya anatta nirvritti. See, so we may think, oh, first we do bhajana, then anatta nirvritti. How is that? Without having anatta nirvritti, without uh, getting rid, getting rid of all the anatta, how can we have bhajana kriya? Because the activity engaging, engaging in bhajana is higher than <coughs> the level of honor so can have constant. Let's see here. Adhoshraddha tata swadhu samaguru atho bhajana kriya. Then he says, the Guru Goswami will explain. Then with the starting, with the starting of bhajana kriya, some kind of starting of bhajana kriya activity, means engagement in devotional service and chanting of the holy names of the Lord in holy association, then as a parallel activity, parallel action, anatha nivritti takes place, getting rid of anatha takes place, both happens parallel way. So Guru Bhargava, the Guru Maharaj gave a beautiful example, like the more you get healthy, the more you get back your health, the more you get rid of your sickness. <laughs> The more you get rid of your sickness through treatment, the more you get health, achieve health. The more you ha achieve health, the more you grow more resistance power against the sickness. So uh, you, get, uh, you get rid of all sickly, uh, all your sickliness, you know, all your sickly nature of life. So with the growth of health, like Vajana Kriya, with the growth of spiritual health, devotional health, which is called bhajana kriya, naturally all the problems of sickness go away. Like Vanatani Vritti. That's how it is explained. So, Bhagavad says, he encourages us, don't worry about so many anathas you have got. If you worry too much, then you will be so will be so disappointed with your own self, will be so sad and disappointed, lose hope, and then you will become a pessimist. That's not our aim. That's not our program to end with pessimism. Just be optimistic. Focus more on the positive achievement what you can have with all positive frame of mind, with immortal hope, with immortal mortal divine expectations, positive expectations in life. Then you will simply go forth. Then you simply engage in bhajana kriya. Just simply wherever, in whatever position you are, whatever condition you are, try to engage in bhajana activity under the gracious guidance of the pure sadhus, devotees, and then your anathana vritti will automatically happen. Don't worry, you don't have to really worry about that so much. To automatically take place. Pratikulla, function of Pratikulla, the word Janam will automatically happen. Mm. Yes, By the power of positive achievement through Bhajana. Mm. Okay, then. Any more, any more query? Okay. We hear an analogy which most of the food has to take. Yes, exactly. Three things, three aspects happen. Exactly, good analogy. Yes. Are you asking any question around this or just a comment? Good. Okay. <laughs> Alright, so we can chant Mahamantra, blissfully engage in chanting Mahamantra, feelings of devotion. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Hare.